So this uh, uh, paper is coming from a vascular surgery department in uh, Paris at Montserrat Hospital. We're a, a reference center creating about 400 case, uh, new fistulas per year. And this is what we do, this is what we favor. We favor distal fistulas, of course, like everybody. The distal, the better. And this is what we don't like. We don't like massive brachial artery fistulas that are always a problem with very few exceptions. So for us, the brachial artery inflow is a no. We favor distal inflow radial or ulnar. However, we do know that uh, uh, for 50 to 60 percent of uh, uh, patients, this is not possible due to calcification, small vessels, etc. So a proximal radial artery inflow is a very good choice. And we published this in a, a study in 1,400 patients with um, uh, my previous team. And uh, we described the advantages of proximal radial artery inflow which gives a faster and better maturation uh, for patients that cannot get a distal fistula with lower complication rates as compared to brachial artery inflow. And essentially it comes down to uh, uh, have the best possible fistula while doing the least possible interventions. And you know, being a, a fan of the proximal radial artery inflow, uh, we came across with this device, the ellipsis vascular access system, which is using a proximal radial artery as inflow uh, point and it has mainly a superficial venous outflow. It's ultrasound guided procedure, it's one stage procedure, it's actually pending FDA approval. They got um, uh, done with their uh, uh, pivotal trial and the results are out in Journal of Vascular Interventional Radiology. And this is how it, uh, it's, uh, it looks. You're doing a venous puncture at the proximal forearm, you're going down the deep communicating vein, then the device, the sheath will come in after you puncture through the vein, the proximal radial artery, the device is here in and then you will close the device, it will capture like a sandwich the arterial and the venous hole, and it will create an anastomosis after uh, a hidden pressure uh, uh, does the welding of the tissue. This is how uh, a very short video looks like. So we're kind of doing a mapping here, puncture of the vein, some illustration there. Needle goes down into the vein, then it will go into the proximal inner artery, We'll make sure that the uh, wire goes down to the radial artery. We'll confirm that the wire goes all the way down to the radial artery at the wrist point. Then the sheath will go in, then the ellipsis catheter will go in. Very fine that the function is correct. It goes into the radial artery, the proximal radial artery here. We'll take the sheath out, close the device, verify, verify we have a good grab, activate the device and complete the anastomosis. And uh, right after this, uh, we have modified the procedure by doing an immediate angioplasty of the anastomosis. We found that in this way we can improve flows and actually make fistulas uh, mature and work uh, much faster as I will explain shortly. So uh, this is how it looks four days after the procedure, uh, patient's actual arm, and this patient was actually stuck and uh, used uh, his fistula with two needle cannulation uh, one week after the procedure. In our experience, uh, since May 2017 until January 2018, we had 60 patients with 98% technical success rate, 96% of uh, overall patency, a mean access flow about a liter, uh, measuring the brachial artery with ultrasound, and uh, we have an uh, average follow-up of four months now, and we have 0% of serious adverse event, events, seriously, uh, and uh, literally 0%. We only had to do one superficialization. All uh, fistulas are used, are usable, the patent fistulas, of course, uh, within four or six weeks. Uh, we started doing an immediate PDA of the anastomosis uh, uh, and the deep communicative aim with a four, five millimeter balloon after patient number 14. And about 18% of patients had an additional uh, required procedures. So uh, we changed kind of the protocol and we stopped like getting any branches or calling branches because we realized that this gives you a multiple outflow, same as distal fistulas, which essentially we give you a low pressure fistula, less risk for aneurysm and bleeding, less risk for thrombosis, less your stress and risk for long-term stenosis, allows for cannulation of both cephalic and basilic vein, avoidance of basilic vein superficialization in 24% of the patients. You can see here some patients have very prominent obvious cephalic vein, you can cannulate like a regular fistula, 
but some other patients it's not the case and in these patients you're able essentially to stick the first part of the cephalic and the first part of the basilic vein when it's superficial before going under the fascia and that was possible in 36 percent of the patients you can actually see patients here that would have needed a basilic vein superficialization and using this strategy we were able to avoid it and we estimate about 24% of the patients we were able to avoid this second stage surgery and these are actual uh, photos of different patients that we were able to do this. That's a patient came to me from Guyana for a, a, a catheter and fistula creation. I was able to do a great fistula which working very well so we even avoided the catheter and we stuck with uh, a fistula on day four the patient is back in French Guyana and he's getting dialysis. Uh, it's really minimally invasive. Uh, uh, that's on the left side, patient's arm having some uh, labs drawn, and on the right side it was a creation. I wanted to talk to you a bit about patient perspective. We're talking about small scar, but this patient's arm is very precious for them. Precious for them. This patient had three fistula failures on the right side, and on the left side, she had a percutaneous fistula, and she was literally tearful in my office when she had a successful percutaneous fistula creation. This is how it looks seven months after creation. You see there is no aneurysm, no other signs of degeneration besides the fistula puncture. So in conclusion, it's really minimal invasive, high safety profile, very efficient and fast after you have some experience, 10 to 15 minutes, high patient satisfaction. Excellent technical success in pregnancy rates, probably less uh, long-term complications and need for interventions, opening new possibilities in terms of vessel cannulation and avoiding superficialization, uh, and uh, possibly early cannulation for some patients and avoiding the catheter. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? We can throw the cube to you, or you can come down. Alexis has convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yes. Uh, thank you very much for a uh, very nice illustration and uh, really an exciting one. But I have an issue which is whenever you depend on the cephalic and basilic and the area of the cubital fossa, you are giving a very limited space for cannulation or puncture for dialysis, and that may lead to later failure of the vein. How can you... So, you're actually giving more cannulation space because you have both cephalic and basilic vein that are usable instead of ligating one or the other. So, it's an additional thing and not taking something off. And we're often saying, you know, it's a funny thing how using a puncture in the vein, sometimes we consider that we're destroying it and some other times we're considering that it's helping to mature. So, in my opinion, yeah, sometimes you have, you have observed that, yeah? So, so essentially, in my opinion, this is not something in competition to all the other options, but it's an additional option, in my opinion. So instead of ligating the vein, I'm just saying we can just add this on top of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we go on with the, uh, the next.